Montfort's genius prolongs in one straight line that of Blessed Alain de la Roche and of Saint Dominic. He completes them by bringing forth a personal grace and interpretation. Commenting on de Montfort's book, Father William says, it goes far beyond mere research. We might say that it contains everything that can be said about the rosary, about its content and form, its real worth, about the instruction necessary for its application and use. The secret of the rosary was written almost two and a half centuries ago, it is true, but it has lost none of its freshness and timeliness. Indeed, today, in the light of the specific requests of Our Lady of Fatima, it will be doubly welcomed by all true clients of Our Lady. We feel confident that it will bring many souls to a better understanding of the rosary, not only as a prayer, but especially as a way of spiritual life. A White Rose for priests. Dear ministers of the Most High, you, my fellow priests who preach the truth of God and who teach the gospel to all nations, let me give you this little book as a white rose that I would like you to keep. The truths contained in it are set forth in a very simple and straightforward manner, as you will see. Please keep them in your heart so that you yourselves may make a practice of the Holy Rosary and taste its fruit. And please have them always on your lips, too so that you will always preach the rosary and thus convert others by teaching them the excellence of this holy devotion. I beg of you, beware of thinking of the rosary as something of little importance, as do ignorant people and even several great but proud scholars. Far from being insignificant, the rosary is a priceless treasure which is inspired by God. Almighty God has given it to you because He wants you to use it as a means to convert the most hardened sinners and the most obstinate heretics. He has attached to it grace in this life and glory in the next. The saints have said it faithfully, and the popes have endorsed it. When the Holy Spirit has revealed this secret to a priest and director of souls, how blessed is that priest! For the vast majority of people fail to know this secret, or else only know it superficially. If such a priest really understands this secret, he will say the rosary every day and will encourage others to say it. God and His Blessed Mother will pour abundant grace into His soul, that He may become God's instrument for His glory. And His word, though simple, will do more good in one month than that of other preachers in several years. Therefore, my dear brethren and fellow priests, it will not be enough for us to preach this devotion to others. We must practice it ourselves. Even if we firmly believe in the importance of the Holy Rosary but never said it ourselves, People could hardly be expected to act upon our advice, for no one can give what he does not have. Jesus began to do and to teach. We ought to pattern ourselves on our blessed Lord, who began by practicing what he preached. We ought to emulate St. Paul, who knew and preached nothing but Jesus crucified. This is really and truly what you will be doing if you preach the Holy Rosary. It is not just a conglomeration of Our Fathers and Hail Marys, but on the contrary, it is a divine summary of the mysteries of the life, passion, death, and glory of Jesus and Mary. I could tell you at great length of the grace God gave me to know by experience the effectiveness of the preaching of the Holy Rosary, and of how I have seen with my own eyes the most wonderful conversions it has brought about. I would gladly tell you all these things if I thought that it would move you to preach this beautiful devotion in spite of the fact that priests are not in the habit of doing so these days. But instead of all this, I think it will be quite enough for this little summary that I am writing if I tell you a few ancient but authentic stories about the Holy Rosary. These excerpts really go to prove what I have outlined for the faithful in French. A Red Rose for Sinners Poor men and women who are sinners, I, a greater sinner than you, wish to give you this rose, a crimson one, because the precious blood of our Lord has fallen upon it. Please, God, that it will bring true fragrance into your lives. But above all, may it save you from the danger that you are in. Every day unbelievers and unrepentant sinners cry, Let us crown ourselves with roses. But our cry should be, Let us crown ourselves with roses of the Most Holy Rosary. How different are theirs from ours! 
A Mystical Rose Tree for Devout Souls Good and devout souls who walk in the light of the Holy Spirit, I do not think you will mind my giving you this little mystical rose tree which comes straight from heaven and which is to be planted in the garden of your soul. It cannot possibly harm the sweet-smelling flowers of your contemplations, for it is a heavenly tree, and its scent is beautiful. It will not in the least interfere with your carefully planned flower beds, for, being itself all pure and well-ordered, it inclines all to order and purity. If it is carefully watered and properly attended to every day, it will grow to such a marvelous height, and its branches will have such a wide span, that far from hindering your other devotions, it will maintain and perfect them. Of course you understand what I mean, since you are spiritually minded. This mystical rose tree is Jesus and Mary in life, death, and eternity. Its green leaves are the joyous mysteries, the thorns the sorrowful ones, and the flowers the glorious mysteries of Jesus and Mary. The buds are the childhood of Jesus and Mary, and the open blooms show us both of them in their sufferings and the full-blown roses symbolize Jesus and Mary in their triumph and glory. A rose delights us because of its beauty. So here we have Jesus and Mary in the joyous mysteries. Its thorns are sharp and prick, which makes us think of them in the sorrowful mysteries. And last of all, its perfume is so sweet that everyone loves it, and this fragrance symbolizes their glorious mysteries. So please do not scorn this beautiful and heavenly tree but plant it with your own hands in the garden of your soul, making the resolution to say your rosary every day. By saying it daily and by doing good works, you will be tending your tree, watering it, hoeing the earth around it. Eventually you will see that this little seed which I have given you, and which seems so very small now, will grow into a tree so great that the birds of heaven, that is, predestinate and contemplative souls, will dwell in it and make their nests there. Its shade will shelter them from the scorching heat of the sun, and its great height will keep them safe from the wild beasts on the ground. And best of all, they will feed upon the tree's fruit, which is none other than our adorable Jesus, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever.